and you, you'll see that I have a lot more stuff than I thought I did. And I only had a two bedroom home at the other place and this place is packed and I really haven't got any more stuff than I had before other than I keep finding new things. <laughs> Most of the pictures in here are family pictures of my mom's side and my dad's side. This picture of the wrestler is my uh, grandfather. He was up for the world championship in 1933. He was also the first masked marvel, and you'll see a picture of him in his masked marvel outfit. Wow. Now, when we get back further uh, in the museum, and that's my grandmother uh, to the side of him. And then there's pictures of both of them when they were real little in the bottom picture. And this is my mother and father. My father just passed away on the 29th of September. And my mother passed away on uh, uh, the 22nd, uh, d on uh, December 26th in 2007. And this chair here, and this chair, and the love seat, and then this chair here, and then there's another one around the corner belonged to Hebram Wells, first governor of Utah, and it's from 1885. I found this at the DI, and I don't know, I paid, I think it was uh, three or four dollars for the painting. And this Utah history book, and there's the painting. So that's the original? It's the original wow. from 1934. Who was the painted that? Um, it's right there. I can't remember. Martin Ferrin or Ferrer? Ferrer. Ferrer. Like no. 1834? No, 1934. Yeah, so, uh, cool. taught art and drama and I've done a few art pieces and this is one of the paintings that I did. I did a special on Jay Bracken Lee which won Best Documentary for 1989 and also nominated for an Emmy and then uh, two other shows that I did. And then I was in Footloose and helped her write part of the script. Oh, you were, really? You were in, I was going to ask you, I see the cover here. Yeah. So you were, you were in Footloose? The yeah, you see me throughout the film. Herbert Ross, the director, says, uh, 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 since you're going to be writing wild minds in the movie, I uh, want you to uh, be an extra in it. I wasn't part of the union, and that's how they were able to justify paying me. And this is my display of Butch and the Gang and Matt Warner. Matt Warner was an outlaw for 20 years, served three and a half years uh, in prison in the old Sugar House prison, and then later became Deputy Sheriff and Justice of Peace of Carbon County, Utah. And this is his uh, Deputy Sheriff's badge. And some bar bar that Butch and his younger brother Dan put around their parents' house. Uh, when Butch was 16 and uh, his brother was 15. There's Butch Cassidy is to the right in this oval frame and he's with Brigham Hamilton. Brigham Hamilton was a friend of his in Carbon County and they used to go out and raise a little bit of hell in Carbon County. Butch would bring a, a box of groceries to the family of uh, Brigham Hamilton and they'd take off and they'd go uh, drinking and, and carousing around. This coffee can was found by my raccoon uh, seven miles east of Height, and in the coffee can was the two bars of crystal white soap, the three studio pictures of the man, woman, and the child. Inside was uh, the $5 bill with Andrew Jackson's picture, 
uh, uh, fee nickels and the Indian head pennies. You say it was near height? Uh-huh. And you were cool about it? Yeah, well I was trying to get her to go out to go use the bathroom. And there was a little uh, little crawl space, like a little cave, and she crawled in there and I went in to get her thinking that there was a coyote or some kind of an animal in there. And she had her arms around that coffee can and wasn't going to let go of it. <laughs> I couldn't get her ever to use the bathroom outside. She would only use the bathroom on a newspaper in a little container. And you'll see her, the raccoon here in just so a second. So was able to in identify who the pictures were No, of? no, they were taken up in Logan. Huh? So probably an old prospector or something. And soap was a luxury oh. um, of uh, having. And here's my raccoon. Her name was Anna Jane Place. Hmm. And we ordered her after uh, for a movie. And I named her after Butch Cassidy's girlfriend. Uh, Etta Jane Place. Etta was not Sundance's girlfriend. It was Butch's. Mm -hmm. When you said you ordered her after from a game farm, oh, from game. so she she came to be a, a prop in the movie. Oh, we were going to do the movie, and the movie was canceled. Oh. And they says, Steve, she's yours. And so I had her for four and a half years. She did Kentucky Fried Chicken ads, and when she got through eating. Kentucky Fried Chicken ads. Um, there was no bones, no nothing left. And you'll see uh, her with the Kentucky Fried Chicken, and then she was had a dog that I had for 15 and three quarters years, and she's the one that found the uh, coffee can. I have. Everything that I write about, I have to have a connection to. I don't just decide that I'm going to write on a particular subject. I have to have a, some connection of either knowing somebody that was involved in it or uh, have spent so much time doing research that I have become part of it. I have the French coverlet that Lincoln had in his carriage the night he was assassinated. It was taken out of the carriage, covered Lincoln in the, uh, the theater because there wasn't too much heat in the theater when Lincoln was assassinated and covered him when they carried him across the street to the Peterson house he had it on him. It has blood stains, high dance stains, candle wax and mustard plaster. There it is on the bed after Lincoln's body was removed. And then I wanted a poster of Lincoln and then a, a studio card that John Wilkes Booth has autographed. How did you uh, end up with that stuff? I got the French coverlet from uh, Herbert Arbach collection donated to me in 1993 and we're in the process of well I mentioned to you that we had uh, tried to get the history detectives to uh, authenticate it this is Houdini's coat from 1909 it has 17 secret pockets and some of Houdini's locks And this is uh, Fred Astaire's bow ties. And this is Clark Gable's coat from Gone with the Wind where he says, frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. <laughs> and originally, uh, I paid, uh, I think it was around $800 for this coat. And at one time it was valued at $7,000. Now it's valued between one hundred and fifty dollars and $350,000. Wow. Some of Clark Gable's tobacco. Normally they made two costumes for every scene for a major star in case of something happened to it. But this, they only made one. And it's the most famous scene. This was used in another scene of Gone with Wind. Clark Gables. And when Gone with the Wind first came out, Shredded Wheat came out with replica Confederate money. This is a replica 
$10 bill and this is uh, the real Confederate. 